in today's video i want to speak on the topic talk with god talk to the situation oftentimes as believers when we pray to god we do not understand the difference between talking with god and talking to god and then talking to the situation that is why sometimes our prayer could look like we are complaining to god instead of having a conversation with him now what does it mean to talk with god and Note the word, the emphasis is talking with God. Talking with someone means you are having a mutual conversation. It's an interactive conversation with participation between the two parties. It is not a one-sided conversation. A one-sided conversation is the one that you are talking to God, which is your boss can talk to you and it does not need your interaction. But when it comes to you praying to God, it is the aspect of you knowing you are to talk with God. You are having an interaction or interactive session with God. You are collaborating with God. The fact about this is that you cannot really talk with someone whom you do not have a connection with. You can't really have a conversation, an interactive conversation with someone whom there is no relational equity, whom you are not aligned with based on your mindset. You know, you can meet someone in a day and it feels like you know the person for long there is a flow in the conversation but most times we've been in church for too long that we have adopted a prayer pattern which we don't even know how to flow with god when we are praying to him it feels like we are performing we are trying to do things or say words to deserve god's attention and it is the wrong place to be the other angle to this is that when you don't know how to talk with god you now come to a place that when you are having situations you are complaining to god and when you go to your situation you are now talking with your situation as if to beg the situation as if hey, this headache do and be going now oh this pain you should be going no you are not to talk with your situation you are not to talk with the sickness you are to talk to the sickness and to talk with god how do you talk with god Imagine God is your father and you are going to talk with your father. You and your father are having a conversation. Do you just start saying, Father? No, you don't shout at your father. There should be a reverence that you have for your daddy. There should be a reverence with which you talk to your father. And I'm not trying to talk down on anybody or on anything you've been doing, whether it's based on ignorance or the perception you have. But just think about this. If you are talking with a friend, do you go to your friend and you are just shouting? If you are talking with a friend, it should be a thing of we are understanding each other and we are flowing. Now, Jesus said something to his disciples in the book of John. It says, I no longer call you slaves because the master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the father told me. See God as your friend and that would change the way you talk with him. Jesus says here, I'm not calling you slaves again. Now, when you consider yourself as a slave before God, you won't see yourself as his friend. That is why when you come as a slave, you are trying to deserve. It is like you are in a debate to try and prove yourself that you deserve to be helped by God. God, I hope with this following few points of mine that you will help me because I've sung in the choir. I've been sweeping the church. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I hope with this following few points of mine, you will consider to heal my body. No, it is not a performance. That is where you forget that this is no more a prayer that you are having a conversation with God. It is complaint. And instead of complaining, you should leave the place of complaint and come to a place of communing with God. Come to a place of knowing this is my friend. Imagine when you are having issues. I was just thinking about this. Sometimes I have some heavy load on my heart and I will call up my friend and we start talking before you know the weight start falling off. And do you know that is the effect that prayer should have on you that when you start talking with God, the weight on your shoulder should start falling off. The weight on your life 
to start falling off. You should literally feel it on your body that because of this good conversation that you are pouring your heart out, at the end of the day, the result should be there is a relief on your spirit. There is a relief on your body, on your emotions, on your soul. And if you do not experience this, it means that something is off on your perception when you think about talking to your father. If I would go to my father with my problems to talk with my father, after the talk, there should be a level of relief. Maybe my dad says, don't worry, I will handle that. Don't worry, I will take care of this. Don't worry, I will take care of that. What is the issue that your father cannot take care of? If you know that God is your father, Jesus said in Matthew gospel, if you, who is an earthly father, you are wicked. Because every earthly father pales in comparison. They are not even worthy to be compared to our holy, heavenly father. And let's read that scripture together. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a stone when he asks for bread? Or would you give him a snake when he asks for a fish? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? I know that we have so many issues with fatherhood on the earth that sometimes some people portray the picture of their earthly father to our heavenly father. Scripture here, Jesus already said that as bad as the earthly father is, he doesn't give the child stone to eat instead of bread. At least that is the simplest thing in place of provision of food to eat. And that is where Jesus compares it. Then what do you suppose a good heavenly father? is holy so it means we are having a holy relationship a loving relationship a communing relationship a relationship that we can talk with him we can sit with him and it is not the picture if you've not had a picture of a father that you can sit together with and enjoy i talked about friendship if you do if you've not had good friendship i want you to know that our father is a father and is a friend and all of this what does it mean it's communion he loves to commune with you that is why the life of jesus on earth who is our example was him talking about the father always with so much love i am here to do the work of my father my meat is to do, do the will of my father i can't do anything unless my father says so like you see the love and in John 17, he told us that just as he and the Father are one, he wants us to be part of that union, the oneness with him and the Father. So you see where we belong. And scripture say that we are sitting with Christ in the heavenly places at the right hand of God, which means if we are seated at the right hand of God, we are here sitting at his right hand so we can turn and look at his face. Father. These are my troubles. And what would be his response? Because talking with someone means there is a listening. It means there is a response. It means there is an attention. It means there is vulnerability. So if you can develop this with your relationship with God, you are vulnerable with him. You give him your attention. You are listening. And it's better you listen more than you talk when you are communing with God. When you are having a conversation with God in your private space, it's better you listen more than you talk. As you are telling him, take time and listen. How do you listen practically? In the word. He has already given you answers to everything you would need in life. And my aim here is for you to be conscious of talking with God, your father. And then let's get to how do you talk with God and talk to your situation or the situation because i don't want you to personalize i don't want you to personalize the situation to be your situation you have to call it the situation let's talk about john 11 where lazarus died and the sisters told jesus had it been you were here so it was a thing that emotionally jesus was not happy about it as a man but he knew that lazarus would be raised but as a man, he cried. Now, this is how he portrayed to us how to talk with God and then talk to the situation. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here. 
so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. You see the difference? When he was talking to the father, there was a tone. There was a reverence. There was a way he spoke to him. He even said, I'm even saying this out loud because of the people around here for them to know that you sent me, that I'm talking to you. But then when he spoke to the situation, he could now shout. Now, this is where I want to address the aspect of people shouting to God. I don't really feel like it's the right approach in talking with God. Because even when you're talking with people, you don't really go to sit down with people and start shouting. You don't really go to sit down with people and start yelling. And I'm not saying that yelling passionately is bad, but there's a place for that. And the place for that is when you are talking to the situation. Now, when you are talking with God, you should take the posture and learn from Christ. He said, Father, thank you for hearing me. It means he knows the Father, there is a connection. And he has heard the Father already. So I would like you to take that posture when you are going back to commune with God. Even as you are listening to this video, you can start communing with your Father. Daddy God, thank you. And that was the name that Jesus came to introduce to us, Father. Now, when you call God Father, let that be stamped in your heart so that you can feel the love of God in your heart. Father, I know you hear me. Father, I know you love me. Father, I know you care for me. So I'm not going to come to a place of asking, God, do you really care? Because that would mean I don't have faith. That was why when the disciples asked that question, Jesus told them, why are you of so little faith? Because if you would have faith, you would know that I care. So in faith, and when I'm approaching God with faith, which is acceptable before him, I know that he cares because I know him, because I've read about him. And everything I've read about him, I've come to believe that it's true. And there's no iota of lie in his word. So now I know he cares for me. Now I know he loves me. Now I know because of him, no single strand of hair on my head will fall to the ground because if he cares so much about the birds that fly and he provides for them how much more i that should give me confidence when i'm talking with my father because i'm now going to him father i know you care then there is this situation that i have and i would imagine what response would your father tell you his word says i have given you the authority to trample on serpent and on scorpion and on all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. So what are you to do? Use your authority. How do you use your authority? Speak to the mountain. Speak to the trouble. Talk to the situation. You are not negotiating with the situation. Oh, headache. You should come and be going. Oh, I don't know why you are still this. No. Command in the name of Jesus. Every headache, every migraine, you don't have a place here. What does the word say? by his stripes we were healed so i'm already healed this lying symptom be gone in the name of jesus is it the pain in your body be gone in the name of jesus and that is it use the authority in his name in his word and cast out the situation talk to the situation and that is how to do it again in mark 11 22 it says then jesus said to the disciples have faith in god i tell you the truth you can say to this mountain May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. I really want this word to get into your heart. Now you talk with God. Talk to the situation. And get the difference. Don't just go to God to talk to him. As if talking to God means it's a monologue. You are just going to give a directive. You are not opening yourself up to have a conversation. Would God even speak back to you? Would God speak after your prayer? Do you listen again? Is God speaking through your children? Is God speaking through the messages you hear? Is God speaking through the post that you see? Are you already receiving replies? Because God can use anything. Are you even sensitive? And that is why I'm calling you to. Don't be in a place of just talking to God. Be in a place of communing with God, of talking with God, and then talk to your situation. Don't come to a place of negotiation with the situation, with the pain, with the heart. No. Talk to it. Use the authority you were given and say to that mountain, 
be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And Christ said, don't doubt it. Believe it. Why would you believe it? Because you can do all things, not by your own strength. You are not saying that you have the power to move the mountain. You are not saying that you have the power to actually heal your body. It is in the name of Jesus. It is through the finished work of Jesus. By his stripes, you were healed. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I hope that it has been a blessing. I hope there is something of value for you to learn. Let me know in the comment section what you've learned. And let's talk from there. And open up a conversation about your experiences of talking with God. Or if you're about to do that, you want to start talking with God, let us know what are your plans concerning that. Thank you. My name is Uwem Akban. This is my YouTube channel. Do well to subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up. I would love to see you in my next YouTube video. Bye.